episode 22 of Strange Power Radio. I'm your host, Tobe Johnson. Today's guest, Andrew Schroyer, Southern Oregon, the co-owner of the Wolf Creek Inn, a very haunted place inside and out. And now Andrew's putting on a Bigfoot event. He wants to tell you all about it. It's actually coming up in six short days, five short days. So we'll tell you what Andrew has planned and why the Wolf Creek Inn is your place to go get your Squatch on. All right, Feral by Aaron at Etsy.com. That's our sponsor. Go to Etsy, E-T-S-Y, Etsy. Type in Feral by Aaron, E-R-Y-N. And on there, you'll see shaman-inspired drums, rattles, and smudge fans that will blow your mind. Make an investment on your soul and buy Feral by Aaron at Etsy.com. We would appreciate that very much. Okay, next up, Andrew Schroyer is going to tell you the nitty gritty from the Wolf Creek Inn. We'll be right back. Andrew Schroyer, co-owner, as I said, of the Wolf Creek Lodge, will be hosting State of Bigfoot Festival in Wolf Creek, Oregon, coming up, well, blimey, this weekend, the 21st and the 22nd. I think the 22nd's really going to be the, the hubbub of it all, but if Bigfoot's not your thing, maybe ghosts are, or maybe a little bit of Pacific Northwest history, or some good barbecue and maybe some beer. It's going to have all those things, and I'm just completely saddened that I won't be able to make it in person. But I'll be there virtually, so if you haven't heard my story about the Al Moon Lab, uh, you can do that this weekend on the 22nd at the State of Bigfoot Conference. The first one at the Wolf Creek Inn, also Tavern, in Wolf Creek, Oregon. But let's hear it from the horse's mouth. I give you... Andrew Schroyer, the Wolf Creek Inn. We're here today with event planner and proprietor of the Wolf Creek Lodge in, I guess you'd say, Southern Oregon. Uh, Andrew Schroyer is our guest today on Strange Brow Radio. Thanks for joining us, Andrew. Thanks for having me. All right. Looks like you might actually be close to the lodge, if not in it there. Are you right on the property? I am. Okay. So tell me uh, what kind of event you have planned up here and a little bit about the Wolf Creek Lodge. So on June 22nd, we're going to have our first annual State of Bigfoot Festival. Mm-hmm. Um, I have um, a deep, keen interest in Bigfoot. I uh, had an experience when I was young that's really stuck with me over the years. And um, I never had a whole lot of uh, exposure to it um, when we were living up in Portland. Um, But since we've been down here in Southern Oregon, it just seems to be incredibly prevalent. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of people that talk about it and they're open about it. They're not as um, hesitant to like bring it up in conversation. So um, my impression is that there's a lot of activity down here and a lot of people that are really interested in, um, in, in Bigfoot. So I thought this would be a great opportunity to uh, kind of get like-minded people together and talk mm-hmm. about it and get really smart people like yourself to, uh, to weigh in on it. Right. We were just going over the technical aspects of doing a, a virtual presentation here via video. And I think it'll work out good, but um, you're inside a, a place where really Wi-Fi shouldn't exist, internet broadband shouldn't exist out in these parts that you're in, but uh, tell people a little bit about the property you're on and the history of it. So we um, are the concessionaires of the historic Wolf Creek Inn. Uh, it's a building that's 135 years old. Um, we took on this project a year and a half ago um, and it has been a roller coaster ride. Incredible, incredible building. Um, with uh, you know, and this is coming from someone that doesn't have a whole lot of interest in the paranormal. I've never been interested in being scared or watching scary movies. Ghosts don't in- interest me at all. Um, but since we've been here, um, I am most definitely a believer. So 
a lot has happened in a year and a half. And this is a daily occurrence? Oh, yeah. It, it happens all the time. So our wait staff, our house cleaners, the people in the kitchen, everybody's had experiences. So anybody that walks in that's skeptical, we give them about a week and then they turn around pretty quick. What's the most prevalent activity? What kind of thing do you, you know, is the most common thing that happens? Um, I would say, so the, the most common thing is uh, with our guests, something that's happening recently is um, we have three rooms that seem to have the most activity. Um, in those three rooms, uh, room six, four, and eight, we're having um, guests who have never met each other. They have never discussed anything together. This is not posted online. But in the morning when we're having breakfast, I'll ask them like, well, how did it go last night? And they'll say, you know, this is the weirdest thing. I swear I was laying there and I felt this little kid crawl in bed and snuggle with us. And so that's what's happening a lot lately. Um, that one seems to be, and so this is like, I've heard this story about eight times so far for right. different couple, And they're like, it is, it really freaks them out. <laughs> we haven't anybody run out of the building, but uh, it lasts for about 20 minutes. And then the kid gets up and leaves. So um, I have to believe that that must be a pretty interesting experience. Yeah. Has this happened to you? It has not. Um, the Probably the most intense experience I've had is when we took over the inn. Um, I was down here quite a bit. I was still living in Portland. I still had work up in Portland. So I'd come down. I'd work about a week and a half, two weeks. And then I'd go back to Portland. And so we were cleaning the place up. It had been closed for a while. Um, and so I was immediately drawn to room eight. Um, it was just, you know, it was, I don't know, it was like one of those things where I just picked the room and I'm like, I like this room the best. So um, I was, of course, here by myself. Um, it's a pretty large building. And uh, there was a lot of activity at night. You would hear... Um, and I was always, I would always explain it away saying, oh, it must be the AC system or it's a refrigeration system or, you know, it's a swirl up in the attic or something. Um, and what it sounds like, it literally sounds like little kids running down the hallway. And guests tell me this all the time. They're like, there was a bunch of kids up all night long running up and down the hallways. And I'm like, no, there's, there's no children <laughs> even checked in the hotel. So it was our guests, our other guests. <laughs> um, so I was asleep um, and about two o'clock in the morning, um, I had someone that felt like a woman jump on my chest. And um, I was flailing around for a while and I, I could not get her off my chest. And, and the reason why I say woman is that I just, I felt, I felt like this is a woman. It, it was not the, the strength of a man or I couldn't explain it, but it didn't feel quite right. Um, so, of course, I immediately, I'm completely freaked out. I'm in the building by myself. And, and it's two, I think it was about 2.15. So I, of course, Google it. And I'm Googling, like, what happens? You feel like somebody's jumped on your chest in the middle of the night. And it immediately goes to um, sleep process. Um, something that's interesting because I've never, it's never happened to me before. But the way it was described is a sleep paralysis, you're not able to move your body, meaning you can't move your hands or your feet. And I remember distinctly being able to like kick my feet up because I was trying to kick my way out of the bed. So I'm like, fine, sleep paralysis, let's take that path. So I started doing a little more research and it, it leads me right to the incubus and the succubus. And they talk about this, this mythic creature that would crawl up on your chest at night and wait for you either to steal your soul or it leaves and comes back another night. And so I was very intrigued by that. Um, you know, Mary Shelley wrote about it. And so I, these are the kind of things that really fascinate me. Like, how do we describe, you know, in the 16th century, something like this happens? We don't have, um, we don't have the technology to do, you know, studies and figure things out. So maybe they make up this mythical creature about that comes and, you know, jumps on your chest at night. Um, and anyway, that was the most intense experience I've had. Um, so a few days later, um, I'm in the front, the men's tap room, this is where our lobby is that we allow, you know, people check in and then we have a little gift shop and stuff. So I'm hanging out and of course the inn is closed and I see this lady peeking in the window and she's, she's looking through and she's trying to get in, she's tapping on the window. And so I said, sure, um, I, I walk up and I'm like, hey, can I help you? And she's like, 
hey, I'm, uh, I'm really interested in the building. Do you mind if I walk around? Sure, no problem. So about an hour later, she comes down, she sits in one of the chairs in the lobby and she starts to cry. Um, and I'm, I'm thinking, okay, this is, uh, we get a lot of interesting people here at Wolf Creek, so I never, <laughs> I never know what to expect. So she starts to cry and she's very emotional. She's like, Andrew, I, I want you to understand that the, they're really happy that you're here. Um, you're doing the right things. Um, don't change anything. Just keep doing what you're doing. Um, there's somebody here that is not real pleased with what's going on. And she goes, I'm a medium, by the way. And, I, and, I, and I'm new to all this stuff. So I don't even understand like how she's tapping into all this. So she, she looks at me and she start, she's starting to calm down a little bit. And she looks at me and she says, what happened in room eight? You're and that's when my, I mean, I, I'm getting goosebumps right now. And I just remember going, this woman is like looking into my soul right now. <laughs> so it was, it was a, it was a, it was a shocker because I had never had that kind of experience before. Well, I had it one time when I was in high school, um, but she did, she looked into my soul and she knew that something had happened. So I, I told her what had happened to me. She said, yeah, I, I can't explain the, the female male kind of confusion. She goes, I can feel that too, that there's something where it's a woman, but it's not. Mm -hmm. um, and so then she starts to talk about um, One-Eyed Charlie um, that she had known about. She did some research and she, there used to be a um, stage driver named One-Eyed Charlie. Um, first, and, and she was considered to be the first woman to ever vote in California because when she passed away, they discovered that she was a woman, but she'd been voting as a man and living as a man. Um, and that's kind of how I feel like maybe it was one night, Charlie. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty incredible. Sending very, yeah. Sending a very uh, strong message of like, this is my place. <laughs> this is kind of the feeling I got. Like you think you're in control, but I am. And, uh, but that's the only kind of interesting negative experience that we've had. Did you know what you were getting into? I mean, it's, it's known pretty well in the paranormal circles, the lodge, but did you know? I had no idea. I, really? After we had signed the contract, um, I started doing a little research like on Google to see how we can, you know, like provide better services. And I was like looking for negative feedback to say, oh, maybe they want better curtains or they want better beds or whatever. So we're going through this list and then I start seeing ghosts pop up everywhere. I'm like, go, and so I Google ghost, Wolf Creek Inn. And then I see that there's been thousands of encounters and people um, having pretty interesting experiences here. So at first we were pretty hesitant to, to kind of open up that door. Um, but there's so many people interested in it and so many legitimate people that are really um, – smart people like you know and, and we you were talking earlier um about your kind of scientific method of approaching this whole thing and i like that and we have a, a, a lot of people that we work with that are the same way they will dismiss things and they're okay saying no that doesn't quite line up and i like that instead of just it just instead of just trying to explain like oh yeah that's a ghost right. well it's not <laughs> Yeah, And I think you might have had a previous speaker of ours and a future presenter of Strange Brow, a guy named William Becker. Yeah, he's okay. been coming down in, um, I believe, the beginning of October. Oh, um, perfect. Right. That up. Good time of the month for William to show up at the at a place like that. Yeah, he's going to be, um, he's going to take over the whole building and he's okay. bringing folks in. Um, really interesting person. Um, do you know William? Yeah, in fact, he came down to the property I just showed you. Um, he's a uh, future. He's going to be teaching a psychic class in Cottage Grove that we're um, doing a lecture on. So he's going to do a lecture in Cottage Grove and then teach a class the same month. But I, he wanted to come down to this Al Moon property. So we brought him down there and he spent, um, you know, the afternoon and evening. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. He's a really nice guy. I, I enjoyed talking with him just briefly. Yeah. So have you seen anything? I mean, you felt something, but what have you seen up there? Um, my experiences with the building are, I'm, I spend most of my time in the kitchen. So anything that happens, it's in the kitchen. There's a back staircase that I get a, 
um, a lot of activity off of. And it's basically like duplicate steps. It feels what it is, is it, it feels like somebody's following you up the steps and then they'll they'll stop and they'll start again and stop because you can hear the steps. Um, and I'm always thinking like one of my employees is behind me, like trying to mess with me. Um, I hear a lot of that. We have a lot of pans that come flying off the um, shelves in mm -hmm. the kitchen and it'll happen all, it, it, it kind of goes in waves. It's very interesting. Um, when we make changes, things start to happen. Right. It's really, interesting. yeah, we'll, we'll change up, like move a mixer somewhere across the floor and then we move some other shelves and, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden pans are flying and all it takes is just, you know, some simple things getting moved around. And mm -hmm. um, I've heard voices. Um, the basement is uh, not the most comfortable place to be. It kind of uh, makes me feel a little uneasy. I like being mm -hmm. down there. Have you had guests that just can't take it? And just I have. Check out I have. early. Yeah. I've had um, last year, I had a lady literally, um, I was in the, the men's tap room at the in, the in the like the little lobby area and she came in and she's like she looks at me she's like okay fuck this place i'm out of here and she just ran out the front door and that's just like okay so i checked her out <laughs> <laughs> and do you have um, are, are you in there with your wife and do you guys have kids we do we have one daughter she's uh 14 years old um she's done uh she's done the tours i've never done the full tour because i i simply don't have the bandwidth to do it i've done partial tours that were just fascinating um we have two groups that we work with um i i call i call them the analog and then the digital version of paranormal investigators mm -hmm. uh, francesca is very analog she does have some equipment but she's been here the longest and she's able to really conjure up some interesting things um mm -hmm. for her her um, clients um, and she does those tours um, at will. So you can make a reservation with her and she'll come in any day that we can do them. And then we have another group, Jefferson State Paranormal video and the microphones and the, the audio equipment and stuff. Mm -hmm. And they're coming up with some incredible visual material. Now, when you say the full tour, are you talking about the i'm trying to figure since you're on the property almost every day right what do you mean by tour you're you're taking a tour every day right um yeah so francesca will line up tours that start at eight o'clock and mm -hmm. basically we have selected parts of the building where she'll she'll have access to the basement and she has access to the men's tap room mm -hmm. and the tour lasts about three to four hours depending on how long people want to do it um mm -hmm. they have a lot of fun everyone i've ever talked to um has had a blast. So with Jefferson State Paranormal, um, we're just now kind of getting that going. Mm -hmm. um, we are going to be blocking off um, nights for them so they can have the whole building to themselves. Since they're a little more intrusive with their camera equipment and stuff, they need to have the building. Right. Um, whereas Francesca can do it and we have regular guests in the building. Okay. Well, tell people what they can expect uh, next weekend and what the dates are and where they can go to get tickets. You can make reservations online. Uh, go to stateofbigfoot.com. Um, they, there's plenty of information there. I'm adding to it. I've been kind of holding back on, we've got a couple of uh, speakers lined up already, but we've got, um, I'm doing the schedule today. So um, okay. I'm not sure going to release this, but we'll have a full schedule on there by the time you're ready to do that. Okay. All right. Yeah, we'll probably post this 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 weekend here and make sure it gets out early so people can get tickets this weekend. Um, can people just show up at the door? Yes. Yeah. Okay. The, okay. It would be nice to RSVP so we, we uh, mm -hmm. know how many people are showing up. Mm -hmm. But we'll have a beer garden, have uh, some food. Of course, I do barbecue, so there will be plenty of barbecue for people. And we've got live music that night as well. How about any off-site camping for anyone that wants to actually get out into the field? They do. They're, we have a lot of BLM around us. Okay. Uh, there's also a county state park that's just down the road. Mm -hmm. So definitely could pitch it. We're, the inn is full, obviously. Okay. Um, we fill up. Our inn fills up almost every weekend. Um, we're about a month out. So if you want to get a room, you need to book early. Okay. 
And also, if folks are interested in doing paranormal tours, you can give us a call and we can uh, we can give you Francesca's contact information. Or okay. as you're reserving a room, there's a add-on package where you add mm-hmm. her package onto your room. Okay, great. And um, if people are interested in, uh, in getting a hold of me about more information, they can contact me at strangebrowradio at gmail.com and I'll relay some message. I think I'll be one of the speakers there too. We're still working out the logistics on what time. I believe it's uh, next Saturday. What's the date again? Saturday the... June 22nd. June 22nd. Okay, great. And we'll have some never before seen video that we'll be playing too. Um, It's actually been seen one other time in Cottage Grove, but it's one of the more compelling UFO videos out there. And it was shot only a couple of weeks ago in Cottage Grove. And it really tells a story about the organic quality of the UFO phenomena. And I'll get into more of that next week too. But hey, thanks for uh, contacting me and getting a hold of us here. And I will talk to you, if not this week, next week, Andrew. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Again, that's the Wolf Creek Inn and Tavern at 100 Front Street in Wolf Creek, Oregon, off of I-5, right off I-5 in Oregon, Southern Oregon. I think there's even an In-N-Out burger you could swing by if you had a hankering. So, you know you love this stuff. That's why you're listening to the show. You've got ghosts inside the hotel. you got Bigfoot out there running around. It's a good time. There's going to be probably a ton of people there in good weather. What more do you want? Historic, the first one... Check it out. Andrew's uh, an honest broker. 100 Front Street, Wolf Creek, Oregon. This Friday and Saturday, 21st and 22nd. Okay. Let's get to our own Bigfoot event here. On July 13th, we have some shifting around to do. The Secrets of the Sasquatch. Brought to you by Strange Brow Radio at 657 East Main Street at the Axe and Fiddle Pub. Our own historic building check it out it is going to be an awesome event with the likes of ron moorhead joe hauser the montana vortex ron moorhead's wife carrie campbell who's also a sasquatch witness tom powell is slated to pop in and kirk sigurdsson myself and maybe some surprise guests so this is a virtual sasquatch event we're going to load up the big screen with the brains behind the paranormal Sasquatch concept, to which I'm a strong proponent. You know that by now. So, 657 East Main Street, 3 to 6 p.m. Pacific Sanders time. I will try to stream this. Now, last time we streamed it, it buffered a little bit, blah, blah, blah. But if I do stream it, I think I'm going to stream it right on Facebook. Last time we did it on Instagram. This time we're going to go to Strange Brow Radio Facebook page and we're going to stream it there. So I will have a a stream most likely going on. But you can't get the good food and the beer from sitting at your home. Not the way that they cook it at the Axe and Fiddle. So what else you got going on Saturday the 13th except hanging out with all of your new friends? I'll expect to see you there with bells on 657 East Main Street. The virtual secret of the Sasquatch meeting we have one every year so be a part of it this is the second one and that's it that's what i have as far as news that was the show thank you again to andrew and remember if you would like to tell a story if you want to be a guest if you want to get involved with a show in any way give me an email strangebrowradio at gmail.com strangebrowradio at gmail.com or go on Facebook. Look us up. We're on Facebook and it's the same name. We got a website, strangebrow.com. Also, we're going to put these on YouTube. It's coming soon. There are people that want to watch a podcast rather than listen to one. And I think that's because of the medium in which these things are based on iTunes and Podbean. Not everybody has those options, but everyone has access to, to YouTube. So we'll put them on there. One last thing. We have our secrets of the Sasquatch meeting. I've explained that to you. But we also have, coming up in August, tickets on sale at Paranormal Insights. 
for psychic William Becker out of Oregon City, who's going to teach a class at the Kalapui Bookstore. It's connected to the the venue, the Axe and Fiddle in Cottage Grove, and it's it's in the evening on the night. So go to William Becker. You can type in William Becker, B E C K E R, or go to Paranormal Insights, and he will sell you a ticket. It takes like twenty bucks for like a two or three hour class on. How to find your own inner psychic. It's going to be cool. William Becker's an awesome guy. And then on the 10th, he's going to stick around and he's going to give a, a free a presentation and tell you all about the cases he's worked and uh, w- what's coming in the future for, for William Becker. So check it out. Check yourself out. And I'll check you out and see you in the trees.